Hi and welcome to the next video in this video series. <clears throat> so in this video I'm going to be touching on a few other areas um, of study I've undergone um, which has been integrated with um, the other methods and modalities um, I've been sharing about in the other videos. So the first area I want to talk about is uh, regression therapy or past life regression therapy. And um, I, I studied hypnosis, um, so there, there are some kind of hypnosis tools that I can also teach. <clears throat> but hypnosis really isn't necessary um, for regression therapy. So um, regression therapy or past life journeying stories um, is kind of sold in two ways uh, within the mainstream. And what a lot of people offer is a past life journey, a past life story. Um, so this is just going on a journey and witnessing a past life. But not, not much healing is unfolding. It's just kind of making us aware. And so there's two parts to in the way that I was taught. And the first part is the story. <clears throat> and the second part is the transformation. And... Within my depossession spirit release methods, um, the core of it is the regression um, transformational skills. Um, they're very powerful and um, they never fail to deliver um, in any given challenge um, that has brought my way. So, <clears throat> so in like a a typical um, regression session, how that would look like. And we may have time on this course to go into the gathering of the story um, in a more thorough way. Um, however, like within Deep Session Spirit Release, it's just getting straight to the core of it and transforming any given uh, trauma and story around that to bring the healing and bring us into alignment with what we prefer. So <clears throat> the story would be, and the, the way to enter um, into a space of regression can be through hypnosis is one way. Um, it could be through drumming, like the, monoto the monotonous sound of the drum, 47 beats per second, takes us into a trance-like state um, that can take us into that state. Or another way could be to bridge into that state, which is the way I typically use which is to like um, you can talk to the client um, so they may have an intention or um, they may not come with an intention. Um, so, so it could be like something physical that they want to transform. And so getting them to concentrate into that physical sensation so that they're really feeling it and thus on the count of three, jump and bridge through that physical manifestation of the trauma into the past life and they can be in the story as quick as that and again we can do it with emotions um, just guiding the client and uh, kind of like poking them bringing that emotion to the surface um, or the, the the other area is um, through um, so we have the physical the emotion and just the thoughts around it um, can also bridge and take them in um, to the life. So in the way I was taught, um, we would jump into an entry point in the life. Now that could be anywhere in the life. It's, it's kind of like guided by spirit and they know the, the best scene for us to begin the story in. So we'll go through that scene, um, just taking note of any significant characters, uh, significant scenes to work out where the life was, what time period, etc. And um, and any other like traumas and teachings that have significance. When there's nothing more of significance, we'll just jump to the next scene in the life and so on and so on and so on. Until we get and by the time you get to the death point, depending on where you enter, you may start to build a, a picture now. And as a practitioner guiding this, you may become aware of what the, the main trauma is going to be. And then they'll experience the death and, um, and um, they, they'll experience the trauma. And um, 
then we will jump from the death scene to the first significant event in the life and then just grabbing everything of significance until we get to the entry point. So at this point we've done a full circle of the full life and all of the information has been gathered. Now as, as like a client uh, myself, uh, while having this, undergoing this, um, my mind can get in the way, the analytical side of thinking that I'm making it all up. Um, however, by the time all of the story clicks together, uh, there's just no way I could have made all that up. And everything starts to make sense. And it kind of starts to mirror scenes in my current life. And what can also be done is um, we can jump from past life into current life when we unravel a story of significance and how is this playing out in my current life? We can jump back and forth to find out more and more about any given trauma or emotion that um, we've chosen to work through. And so basically that is it, the, the gathering of the stormy story. And um, the transformation side um, is where all the magic happens. And uh, it's an, an area that um, I really enjoy and uh, it's exciting for me. And so, um, so, so one thing that's important is that the, um, is that the, the, the spirit from that life, the client, has to meet the perpetrator. So it's all about empowerment. And, and with regression, as with ayahuasca, these kind of medicines, they're not like pharmaceutical medicine of putting a plaster on, take this pill and suppress. It's about reliving them so that we can uh, transcend them. And um, this may be a bit off-putting to a lot of people and concepts they've been taught um, to, to not relive trauma. Um, however, in a well-held space, and if it was, say, a torture scene or something like that, we can guide them through it very quickly. And it's, it's holding the space and allowing a like, cathartic release through crying, shaking, or using a type of energy healing like body therapy, releasing... Um, those energies that have been carried within the body so that thus empowers the client more to stand up and face the perpetrator. So um, obviously the client doesn't want to face the perpetrator, but through using uh, many empowerment tools that I've learned, um, they, they always feel empowered to meet with the perpetrator. And then the whole point of it is, is to raise the awareness of the part of the client so that they can see their part in it. They can fully understand the teaching and the benefit it's bringing to their lives. And with that, they can find peace. And with peace comes forgiveness, which is the most important part. With forgiveness, any contracts can be ended and then further transformation um, can unfold. And there's many different methods in empowering the part to find forgiveness. Um, such as going into the soul contracts that were formulated before the uh, soul ever come here or ever came before the life. And um, other ones are you could meet the perpetrator as a child. And, and I did this with my father and I could see how um, he'd gone through everything I went through and that raises um, awareness. Or um, I'll share one other tool, but there's many, many tools. And not only is there many, many tools that I share and teach that, like, if you never know, just ask a spirit and they'll just give you a new method in any given moment. And that's how I've really built up a, a big sort of varied uh, toolbox of techniques of transformation. But the one tool for me that never, ever fails if, if everything else isn't enough for the part to find forgiveness is to jump into another past life where the roles were reversed. So the perceived perpetrator is now the victim and we're the perpetrator. And that builds a lot of compassion and most people don't want to be in that space. So in that space, I take them out very quickly and they can see the, what they did to them, that they've attracted it back and they're both just learning both sides of the coin of the given teaching that um, with that, um, as my like ace at the sleeve, um, Forgiveness is um, always reached. And um, this is quite a deep area um, that could be talked about for quite some time. But it's completely um, life-transforming um, modality. Um, 
it's really powerful and really incredible and um, it's pretty much something that I do on a daily basis um, in my inner healing as um, like I said it's become quite an integrated practice of leaving no stone unturned in any given healing that I've been called to um, on a daily basis so that's just a little bit on regression therapy and what we can also do is we can travel into positive past lives where no transformation is needed and we could potentially gather the skills and powers of the parallel part of us and manifest them and integrate them into this reality or we can travel into future lives and um, and gain those gifts and skills and this is a method I use um, in manifestation is um, I travel to the future to a point where I have what it is I want and then I bridge that energy back to now and then everything I could possibly need uh, to support me in that manifestation is given to me in that time frame that I've set for myself to gain whatever it is um, I want and desire um, in any given moment. So that's the area of regression. Now there's another area called life between lives which is really fascinating and really exciting and that's something I'll be teaching in the future on um, later courses. Um, I have like at least four of these um, deeply uh, advanced teaching courses that I'm going to be putting out there in the near future. But the Life Between Life story will fit nicely into uh, the next video when I talk a little bit about my story and who I am and um, what I'm about. So. Another area um, that we will touch on is the Akash and um, some people call this the Akash records um, but with my belief of the nature of reality that's not actually accurate um, because I don't believe that there's such thing as time and um, it's just this linear um, illusion in this matrix of us evolving in this way so I choose to call it the Akash and um, and the, the Akash is, um, is basically the all that is, the all that has been, the all that ever will be. Everything is contained within that zero point field. And any uh, knowledge can be gained. But there, there is a library there that contains books of all of my incarnations. And, and I can travel and um, open those books and um and gain access into like kind of bridge into any of those lives now we're not allowed to read everything in the akash as we're not allowed to receive everything in the life between lives uh meditation um because spirit wants us to receive just enough in any given moment not to impede on our soul development and growth if it gives us everything uh um, we wouldn't learn the lessons in a set out kind of way to gain the full spectrum of the energetic teachings uh, to any given teaching. Um, and um, uh, an amazing um, ex-girlfriend of mine um, guided me into um, the Akash and um, she teaches the Akash. She's absolutely incredible. And... Um, when, when she took me in, uh, one of my guides, um, I was working with quite strongly at the time, which is Chua Jackie, <clears throat> um, she asked permission from her guides to, uh, to gain access to my book, and they denied her. And she said it's the first time she's ever been denied. And, um, and I said, she asked me, what can you see? And I said, well, I can see a book, and it's got a picture of Chua Jackie on it. And then she started giggling. Um, as Chua Chucky was giggling and um, this particular book um, having a diet of Chua Chucky and emerging with Chua Chucky becoming one um, she needed to ask his permission also to open the book and when she finally asked them there was lots of giggling and um, he then allowed her and um, and this took me on a fascinating, fascinating journey of uh, deeper revelations of my connection uh, with Chua Chucky. And, and I feel this story would be best served to be continued in the next video. Um, and um, it's, it's not an area I've gone so deeply into. Um, 
although it's an area I, I can go into if I ever choose to. And um, there's just so many modalities uh, to choose from. Um, it's, it's, it's not one that um, I work with so deeply, but um, I do have the connections and, and the knowledge uh, how to go into that and, um, and use that as a permission slip to, uh, to do healing and to, to learn about oneself. Um, but in the way I've chosen to predominantly learn is from the plants and, and they teach me through metaphors that I translate and um, the dream space, the ceremony space and, and verbal channeling. Um, so um, yeah, it's, it's not required, um, but sometimes if uh, I'm finding it hard to discern, uh, those would be the times that I pick up that book and, and uh, work with a different permission slip in that moment to uncover what it is I'm searching for. So those are those areas. Um, there's also some aspects of energy healing um, that we can share and teach within the organisation, um, working with our plant diets and merging with them and challenging these energies to remove like objects and intrusions and such and such. Um, and um, so that's, a, that's another big area um, that um, we can delve into um, on the course. Um, so the, the last kind of area that I want to share is um, about a little bit about my extraterrestrial connection and um, it, all of these different extraterrestrials I work with um, have all shared um, attunements with me. Now as for depossession, um, I wasn't able to do that and I could do it for other people but for the first year or so I couldn't do it because it felt so uncomfortable in my body that I felt like jumping out and running away. It was too much resistance. It was near impossible for me to do to it. And I met this Palladian guy called Chamza, who's a parallel version of me. And it shared this attunement with me and said, now try the possession on yourself. And it was New Year's Eve and I was doing a ceremony with friends. And suddenly I did the first one on my own I'd ever done. And prior to that, I'd been training uh, a guy and he wasn't able to do it either. So what I was doing, I was channeling my spirit kind of attachments through him and kind of like Mr. Miyagiing him, like waxing him on and waxing him off, teaching him all the way. And through this practice, he was then able to really learn without any books, any writing to do all this stuff himself. And so then he would do them on me and I would do them for him. And so this ceremony, I was able to do it myself and he wasn't able to do it on himself either. It must be something to do with the depth of the addiction vibration that we both carry. And so then like um, I went over to him in the ceremony and said what had happened. And I sung an Icaro and shared the attunement with him. And then, I don't know, half an hour later, he came running over like an excited little school kid and said, I did it, I did it, I did it. And from that day forward, I've never looked back. And I've pretty much been doing at least one a day. And uh, some days um, I've done 21 in a day. And um, this is the reality I've chosen. Um, like anything uh, that I choose in my reality is very real and very valid for me. This may not be your belief. So it's that's true also for you in the way we choose to work with this. And... Um, it, it serves me currently to perceive things in this way through my inner reality. Um, but for teaching for others, I, I'm very open to, um, to changing the language and definitions uh, so that it can be more accessible and open to others who uh, don't just say we're all crazy. Um, so like I've said before, I'm very open to being challenged on the training courses and meeting to the needs of the beliefs of the group and the whole. Um, that we may work as a team to create the best language definitions in the way we all feel uh, the world can receive um, these super powerful uh, modalities of um, healing. And so um, that's just one attunement. I have like a bag full of them. And so I share these attunements with others and there's not really anything they can't do. And with my plant dietas, they're not like mastered diets just yet that, that that takes a long long time 
Um, however, it may not take so long, depending on the modalities and the beliefs of the individual. Um, so um, with, with the plants, they don't have the same power as the ETs in me because um, they're not matured fully. Whereas the extraterrestrial energies are fully healed, like wise, true self beings that have such powerful vibrations. So it really has served me to work with them alongside the plants. Um, and one of my maestros, if, if, not, if he can't, if, if it's not working for him, what he's doing with the plants, he just sends the energy to his ETs and they always come through and sort it out. So there's many different ways of working with this and there's many different journeys that we can do with this, um, such as traveling onto spaceships and um, going to other star systems, going to the Arcturian stargates and bridging these energies into the earth to help the mass awakening and going into healing chambers for any given intent and preparation healing ten, uh, chambers to um, to prepare us for 5D consciousness. So, I mean, it's, it's really exciting and um, anything is possible and we can do anything um, like within the training course, if anyone has an idea, um, we can create a modality to suit an idea to journey and discover in any way, whatever it is we want. Um, there is only one rule to shamanism and that is there are no rules. And um, so there, there's many cool things we can do. And there's so many stories I can share about these extraterrestrial connections, but um, I feel I'm gonna leave it there with the ET stuff um, and just touch on channeling and channeling is something um, we will also be sharing and teaching verbal channeling um, but everything is channeling like everyone's an actual channel and I catch myself channeling all the time and in those moments that like, I give someone advice and it's like well where the hell did that just come from I'm going to start following that myself and um, what a, a friend who taught me some channeling methods, broke it down into three areas of channeling that um, the, the lower end of the spectrum is um, we, we may be channeling and one of our beliefs may be uh, bleeding through and that belief is not like intrinsic truth. So we may feel that as a slight low vibration, but practice repetition makes perfect. And then the second area is we may be channeling our personal truth, which is feeling quite high vibration because it is quite true to those we're channeling to. And then the next area is like pure channeling from spirit, uh, which feels very high vibration and is much, much more closer um, to intrinsic truth. So the, the channeling side of things, um, there is infinite possibilities and we can channel the extraterrestrials, uh, we can channel like our ancestors, our loved ones, um, famous people, um, there's anyone. And um, I like to make games um, on my courses and training courses, and I like to make it fun. Um, so there will be lots of fun games uh, that are really fun that the group can join in um, with channeling and sharpening each other's discernment tools by being in that collective uh, vibration um, with one another. Um, so um, I think I've shared a lot of um, the kind of methods and uh, modalities that will be shared within this training course. Um, everything I've shared can't really do justice um, to what it is um, you'll receive if you allow yourself uh, to really uh, study and get the most from the course and any resistance felt within you, um, the, the methods will empower you to overcome them so that we can uh, study to a very um, deep level. And um, there's, there's, there's so much more to share with you, um, but um, I don't want to spend uh, eight, ten hours um, on this video series, um, which I once did on a podcast that went on for about eight hours. So um, I'm going to leave it up there for now. Thank you for listening.